It's day four of the crisis engulfing the BBC. This is an incredibly complicated story. It's uh, very litigious. There are now claims and counterclaims. The story has moved on considerably overnight, and it's really important that we stick to the facts. There's been an enormous amount of speculation, also people posting things all over social media, uh, which may well be libelous. We've got presenters coming out saying it's absolutely not me. Now, if you have just woken up, I'll just uh, remind you of what is going on. So claims made by the mother, this is from the young person's point of view, it's reported that claims made by the mother at the heart of the scandal are rubbish. This is according to a lawyer representing the young person. So there is, uh, so basically it says that the young person sent a denial to the son uh, on, so obviously the son was the paper that broke this in the first place. This was sent allegedly on Friday saying there was no truth to it. The lawyer went on to say the inappropriate article was still published. Now the Sun has responded and is defiant and is sticking to its guns. The Sun says we have reported a story about two very concerned parents who made a complaint to the BBC about the behaviour of a presenter and the welfare of their child. Their complaint was not acted upon by the BBC the son went on to say, we have seen evidence that supports their concerns. It is now for the BBC to properly investigate. Now, the parents of the youngster at the centre of uh, this scandal said that they spoke out to protect their child. So this is clearly a counterclaim. They say they stand by their allegation that the top BBC star paid their child thousands in return for sex pictures. This is the mother and the stepfather. They also went on to question who had paid to provide their child with an expensive lawyer. So claims and counterclaims. Today, Tim Davey, the Director General, also has a scheduled media briefing and will likely face some very difficult questions indeed. Well, joining me now is Lord Ed Vasey, Conservative peer. Uh, he was also a Culture Minister, I believe, from uh, 2010 to 2016. Good morning, Ed. Good morning. It's a really complicated story, they said. It, it moves on very quickly indeed. We've now got claims and counterclaims. I think it's fair to say it's incredibly murky. The question is, these allegations were made back in May. The BBC said it investigated internally, but the presenter in question wasn't suspended. And there are lots of questions over whether the BBC acted appropriately. Yeah, I think that goes to the heart of it, David. As you say, there are claims and counterclaims. The story is very murky. People can speculate across a whole spectrum of behaviour of what happened, whether it was either illegal or entirely uh, consensual and part of the person's private life and therefore not our business. And that whole kind of spectrum of possibilities seems to exist given the amount of uh, different information that has been put into the public domain by both sides, as it were, the newspaper that made the allegation, The Sun, and also the, as you referred to earlier, the letter from uh, the uh, young person involved from their lawyers. Uh, so nobody really knows what is going on. But as you say, at, at the end of it all, if the BBC has questions to answer, it seems to me the key question is what did they know in May and did they take appropriate action in May given the facts or the, the scenario that they were presented with in May when it's alleged the first complaint was made by uh, the parents. That seems to me when it comes down to it, as more and more potential facts emerge and the story begins to uh, coalesce around an agreed set of facts, that will be the key question that the BBC will probably have to ask, answer. Well, as you know, uh, you were Culture Secretary, um, you were Culture Minister, sorry, and Lucy Fraser, who's Culture Secretary, obviously now embroiled as well. The, the, the essence of the BBC is to inform, educate, entertain. And as you know, it's all based on trust. This is a public service. We pay for it. What has this done to the reputation of the BBC, do you think? Well, it's, uh, I think uh, the, the BBC management, although we, uh, a lot of people are obviously having a, a go at them, will be as... Uh, frustrated as many other people are. Uh, this is not a, something that they engineered in any way, shape or form, of course, and it's not something they ever wanted to happen, and they will have to look hard at their procedures. There was uh, the celebrity agent, Jonathan Shallot, was on Talk TV last night making the point that numerous complaints are made about celebrities every single day. Some of them are complete 
uh, fantasy complaints and the BBC has to try and sift through them and know which ones to take seriously and which ones to pursue and which ones to uh, just put aside. And mm. uh, they will have to look very hard at whether their procedures were robust enough if uh, certain scenarios play out uh, to have dealt with this complaint more seriously and more effectively. That will be the question for them. But in terms of, you know, we've had a media scandal quite uh, recently and the same questions arose for that media company, ITV, which was... Mm. How senior, uh, who knew what when? How, how many senior people knew what was happening uh, at a certain point and did they fail in not acting quickly and appropriately enough? And those will be the questions. And if, uh, if, the scenario, if a scenario plays out where the BBC is found to be wanting in those, in those cases, then uh, there will be serious questions to be asked of people. But I think the key point, I mean, I'm a supporter of the BBC. I think it's a very, very important institution. Uh, it has had scandals in the past and it will no doubt have scandals uh, in the future. But I think uh, all things being equal, you know, I want to see the BBC survive and thrive as part of our media ecosystem. It's very frustrating for some companies that compete against it. I'm a Times radio presenter. I know the kind of armory we have compared to BBC radio. It's not necessarily a fair fight. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I don't support uh, the importance of having a healthy BBC, particularly, ironically, given what we're discussing, in an age of big disinformation when people do want to mm. uh, have the facts of stories uh, played out to them. But that's why your question is so important, David, because the reason ultimately a lot of people do turn to the BBC uh, for news is because inherently we have a huge amount of trust in it, which is why it's important mm. Uh, that this uh, scenario uh, is dealt with as effectively as possible. Uh, uh, just in terms, I mean, clearly uh, many people at the BBC very, very angry at the way this has been handled. I know that uh, various BBC sources saying there's utter disbelief. Apparently, it's sort of the it's almost funereal the atmosphere at the BBC at the moment. Also, many people openly angry about the way the BBC has dealt with this, including people who are presenters. And as you know, many of them came out and said, "It is not me. It absolutely isn't me." We've got people like Jeremy Vine threatening legal action against people. There's a really interesting point here, as you mentioned about social media I don't think the public really understand what they're doing when they tweet or indeed put any message out on social media where they accuse people of various offenses and may well be committing libel that's right I mean anyone who is uh, speculating about who the person uh, may be and if they attach a name to that speculation and they are wrong for a start they are uh, opening themselves up to very, very serious legal consequences. And even if they are right, there is still uh, in this country, thanks to the courts, a right to privacy <coughs> for people's private lives. So that may also still put them at risk. <coughs> We've just had the online safety bill going through Parliament, which is the bill that regulates the internet. And it'd be interesting to see when that comes on stream, what uh, measures a regulator like Ofcom could take in the future, because at the moment, if I tweet something, that's my responsibility. If I tweeted something about you, David, heaven forbid, uh, <laughs> As you, usual. Would take le you would take legal action against me, but not against Twitter, because Twitter is not what we would call a publisher or indeed a broadcaster in these circumstances. It's not a newspaper, so it's not liable. It's not a broadcaster, so it's not liable about what appears on its platform. But it will now be subject to a code of conduct uh, under Ofcom rules, and it will be regulated by Ofcom. And it may be that in the future, in a scenario like this, the regulator might get heavily involved on the side of, uh, you know, dealing with the social media companies, not the BBC. Mm. So just just in terms of, of Tim Davey, this uh, scheduled appearance today, this will be an extraordinary event, I'm sure, and it will be very difficult for him. What can the BBC do from here? What do you think the BBC should do? Well, the BBC will have had uh, been up, uh, <coughs> metaphorically, I guess, all night with its lawyers. Um, Right, literally writing down probably word for word what Tim Davey can say about this, mm. because this is in effect a legal case, to coin a phrase, it's, you, know, you could argue it's sort of sub judice in, in some ways, and he will probably have a form of words which uh, effectively say to people, look, I cannot comment on this, uh, these are all allegations, they're not proven allegations, it would be wrong of me obviously to name anyone involved in this case, and it would be wrong of me to comment any further. And I think he will just try and have to hold the line. It would be very difficult. These are the BBC's 
annual results that are being published, which is normally a very pedestrian and dull affair. And uh, unfortunately for Tim Davy, 95% of the questions to him will not be about the success of BBC drama or the uh, effectiveness of their cost-cutting exercises. It will be about this issue. It will indeed. Ed, very good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. That's Lord Ed Vasey, Conservative peer and former culture minister.